So if you haven't, haven't quite gotten it yet, it's okay. Uh, so let me, I'm going to have to. All right, so if you're in, in the Git, Git repository on your terminal, uh, if you git checkout uh, solutions, then you um, can look at the solutions here. I'll actually merge the solutions into master after the tutorial. Uh, now let's look at the base map solution. Okay, so this, this, is, this is my solution for these projections here. So if we look at uh, what I've done is I've set up subplots. So we'll plot four different subplots, one for each of the, the four global maps in part one. So here is the Mercator definition. Here we set the bounds, minus 80 to 80 in long, er, latitude. Uh, we've set minus 180 to 180 in longitude. And here I set, I set lawn zero to Austin, but that didn't do anything anyway. And I think it, if you leave this out, I don't think that works either. Did anybody try that? Did it, did it, maybe we're on different versions. You can always set your X limits, though, to, to be some sort of limits that would uh, that shift everything. I don't. Well, let's try it. Let's see. Um, so I'm going to run, I'm going to run this script right now. This is, so this is my solutions. And running it. And it should pop up my, okay, so my, uh, this is my great circle, and they're on top of each other. Here's the, here's the part one uh, for, the, for the four different projections. So there's Mercator, Robinson, orthographic, and azimuthal equidistance. Anybody know what the azimuthal equidistance is doing here? It's not, not quite polar. So this is centered at Austin, Texas. And every point on the globe has true distance, or, or scaled correctly distance, from Austin, Texas on a great circle route. So out to the, so the, the outer limit of this circle here is the antipode of Austin, which is somewhere in the South Indian Ocean. And, uh, and every point here would, would be in relation to its distance from Austin um, from that center. Right. So this is a projection that uh, uh, airlines sometimes use for routes from a hub or something like that. You can see the, the shapes are greatly distorted towards the outside. Uh, orthographic, what, what's the orthographic projection doing here? Yeah, it's a, it's a view of a sphere from infinity. Uh, there are other projections that are uh, viewing the sphere from uh, perspective from closer by, like the perspective of a satellite or something, um, are available as well. Uh, the Robinson projection, uh, what's that one doing? It's what? It's pretty. It's pretty, yeah. So it's a, it's a nice projection uh, for looking at. It, it doesn't do anything quite right. It, it doesn't preserve areas or shapes um, or directions, uh, but it, it is some compromise between all of those and, and showing the whole, uh, the whole world at once. Right, and this is the, actually the official projection that uh, National Geographic uses for global maps now, I think, uh, is the Robinson projection. Well, with Austin in the middle, of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, and if you don't want to change into the solutions branch locally, you can do that on, on GitHub. You can, you can just go to... Um, There. You, you can switch branches here with this, with this menu. Uh, you can go to the solutions branch uh, on the website without, without checking it out locally. Uh, if you want to just switch in your local repository, that's fine, but you can, you can look at them online without doing that. All right, so here's the base map solution. Is there. Okay, so let's, whoop, let's go back to the the code here, I'll close this window, 
Um, so here's the here's the code again, uh, and then I I do some standard things on all the maps where I draw the parallels and the meridians, that is the lines of uh, latitude and longitude, uh, and then fill the boundaries with a, the same color and so on. So I do the same thing over and over. So you might do that as a as a function, so you save a little bit of boilerplate and, and actually do it that way. There's a, a example script that's called generate maps that, that has a, a function that defines those kinds of things. And, and this is, the generate map script is the one that generates the different maps of the United States that I, I showed in the slides. So you could do that along those lines if you like. Okay, questions about the map projections? Is that okay? Um, well, that's, that's what, let's see, matplotlib, uh, so, so here, um, yeah, I guess it's a little bit, it's a little bit ambiguous because some of the, some of the functions take geographic coordinates and some of them take map coordinates. Um, but you just mean Yes, so, so if you're doing a, a straight matplotlib layer, that's, that's going to be an X and Y, which are map projected coordinates. Now, some of the, um, so this is in, in projected coordinates. So here's, here I'm drawing the dots for the city locations. Uh, the great circles, though, the, the great circle method here, draw a great circle, that's the, that's the method that actually draws those great circle curves. Those take, um, those take points in latitude and longitude. So here I do Hawaii to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to Moscow, and so on. Um, here when I do, take a look at this line, I'll, I'll show another example of this later, but, but here I do the conversion of all five uh, all five cities at once. So here there's a little bit of uh, Python sequence magic. Um, I took a list of tuples. I unpack it into an argument to the zip function, and then I unpack the results from the zip function into the arguments for the, for the constructor. Well, I'll, I'll show you another example of that there, but, but instead, of, instead of having to refer to every coordinate separately and then putting them all back together manually, I, I hear unpack, zip, unpack. Um, uh, those, those functions. And here, those projected coordinates for the dots are X and Y, and then let me find my plotting window again. Where'd my plotting window go? Uh, where'd my plotting window go? I've lost my plotting window. Let me try get it again. Must have closed it. Okay, so, so here's, the, here's the actual plot. Um, so I did this on a Robinson projection because we already had that uh, for, for part one. Uh, and I just shifted where the center longitude was a bit so that it was um, easier to fit everything on here. And here is Hawaii to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to Moscow, Moscow to Havana, Havana to Quito. All right, like that. So, um, so by default, um, I think, uh, Base map is using 100 points to approximate the great circle, and you can change the resolution of that if, if that's not high enough or you don't want to bother with that many points. I think you can, you can set the resolution of how many points it uses to do the great circle approximation as it actually draws it as segments in between. Okay, how many people are able to do the, the great circle plot? Did you get, get that part done? So, so some, but, but not, not a lot of people got that far. Okay, well... Um, Take a look at that uh, and, and see that you understand it, but we're going to move on to 
uh, to other parts now. Oh, am I off the internet? I agree. All right. All right, so we were here. Okay, so while we're on the subject of plotting, I want to introduce one library. Um, and uh, I've got a short example of it, but I don't have an exercise. So Cartopi is a, I think that's how you pronounce it. You could also Cartopi. pronounce it Cartopi, right? Cartopi. Cartopi? Is it Cartopi is preferred? All right, does that make sense? Um, so it's a, uh, a package that does object-oriented um, definitions of map projections. It also uses matplotlib, um, but the idea is to have um, a sort of higher level interface uh, to, to create maps from your object. And, and it also uh, includes Shapely, or interfaces to Shapely and Proj4 and does, does things like that. Um, so, Here's a quick example. This is from the Cartopi uh, documentation that generates a map around Africa uh, on these axes. Here you add features to, um, to your plot axes, and those features are land, ocean, coastline, borders, lakes, rivers, and so on. Uh, and you, you add all of those things, and then you set the limits to the, your map, and then it generates um, the map of that area. So it's a, it's a nice uh, interface uh, for it. So check that out. I think there's a talk on Cartopi uh, tomorrow afternoon as well. Car Cartopi, sorry. Cartopi. Okay. Um, so now from plotting, let's, let's talk a little bit about data. Um, so getting data onto our maps is really what we'll, we'll spend the rest of the time on. Um, and, you know, just so we know, all know what we're talking about, uh, the geospatial data world is divided into two kinds of data. We have vector data, which is points and lines and polygons and various um, combinations of those, and raster data that is uh, grids of XY data that may be in some projection or other. Uh, but uh, they could correspond to images, to digital elevation models, to, um, to samples of a gravity field or, or something like that, that that has coverage over an area and you're sampling them at, at grid points. Now you can, uh, you can see that uh, raster data corresponds to vector points at the grid nodes, uh, if you like. So you can think about it that way. You can always go back and forth between um, regularly sampled gridded points and the, the raster data equivalent, but, but we actually deal with these kinds of data pretty separately for, for various reasons. Uh, so in the open source geospatial world, the big package for dealing with all sorts of, of data is GDAL, also pronounced Goodle, but I'm going to say GDAL. Um, and this is the Geospatial Data Abstraction Library. It's a, a huge, well-established library that handles all kinds of uh, formats. Um, it's a compiled libraries, uh, command line utilities, and, and APIs uh, written mostly in C++. And I'm going to talk here about the Python bindings for those libraries, how to use those libraries uh, in Python. And to access those, those bindings here, it's from OSGO import GDAL. Uh, and that should give you access to uh, the GDAL bindings. Uh, another package that's included, or really part of uh, GDAL itself, is OGR. So OGR uh, is the simple features library that does vector data. So, so they're all part of the same package, but you have to import GDAL for raster data and OGR for vector data in general. Uh, and that's, that's how you deal with it. Yes, sorry. What's the difference between uh, importing from OSGO and directly importing GDAL? 
Uh, importing directly GDAL is deprecated. It still works, but it's the old way to do it, and, and it's not guaranteed to work in the future. So this is the preferred way to do it. It's all under the OSGEO uh, umbrella. That's the, the open source, uh, open space? I think it's open source uh, geospatial foundation that, that um, maintains uh, GDAL and PostGIS and a few other open source packages um, that uh, are important tools. Uh, import GDAL directly will still work, I think, in, most, in any versions you have, but, uh, but it's preferred to do it this way. Um, so just a, just a look at how you investigate what drivers are available in your installation of GDAL, and this is going to vary depending on your install, because at compile time, when you build GDAL, you, you choose, am I going to add the driver for this and the driver for that, and, and there are a lot of optional things that you have to compile separately and maybe link to other libraries that you've, you've built separately and so on. So building everything that's possible in GDAL is really hard. Um, and so any particular installation that you install from your package manager is probably going to have some subset of all the possible available ones. Uh, these are the ones that, that we have in uh, the Canopy installation, which I think this was, I don't remember the number, um, 40 or something, 40-something uh, different uh, raster formats, I think, and, and more than that, vector formats. Uh, but you can, you can investigate the, the drivers here from your command line. Once you've imported it, uh, GDAL get driver count is the method that, that tells you how many there are, so you can immediately get that number. And then you can iterate over those drivers and, and get the name for each driver, and that's, that will spit out all of this. If you just type this from your IPython prompt, you should you should get a big list that tells you, okay, it supports virtual raster and geotiff and, and so on and so on. Um, arc info, binary, arc info, ASCII grids, uh, GRASS, which is an open source um, JS library, um, uh, and all that. So now I'll show a couple examples of using the, the GDAL library to read raster data. So here, this is the topography of the island of Kauai, in Hawaii. Um, and this data comes from the USGS national map, uh, the seamless, seamless uh, topography data, the uh, digital elevation data of the United States. And there's an example script that, that actually does this. And this is a sort of simplified version of what the example script does. But, but look at example slash PY uh, is, is where the, the full example is. It actually is two different uh, GDAL files, and it has to load them separately and then glom them together and trim them to, to the edges and so on. Uh, but, but the basics of reading a, an image file, and, and here um, this is a... Uh, it will automatically detect this uh, image file type, the GeoDesk uh, image file, when you open the file. All right, so, so here we have a, a handle on the open file object, and that has methods on it. And this particular method, which is especially interesting to us working in Python, is we can read as array, which means get the data in this object and read it into a NumPy array. And so that I can assign that directly into a NumPy array, and I can manipulate it however I want in, in uh, Python as normal. Uh, yeah? Where are the slides you said in the README? There's a link? Yeah, so, so the README in the, in the repository, the, the first link in that README is the slides. Okay. Right? It, it's the title is linked to the slides. I, maybe I'm, I'm not explicit about that. But. Did you get it? Uh, yeah, right. I understand. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so let, let's take a look at that, what the actual example is. This is a short, sort of shortened version. Um, in the full example, let's go to examples, Kauai, um, and this is what it looks like. So here's some imports. I tell it to use exceptions find the data directory, and then here, there are two data files, the north and south parts, and each of those are a one degree by one degree block, and I read them into 
two separate NumPy arrays, and those arrays are north and south. So I, I create, here's, here's one NumPy array, here's another NumPy array, um, and then I combine them, I, I vertically stack the north and south into a single array, and I find the limits where there's data and trim it to those limits. Right, so, so here, I do two things. Here's trimming the limits to those uh, places where there are data, the minimum and, and uh, maximum ind indices in, in rows and columns, and here is setting the zero, um, the zero values to NAN, um, and just plotting the, the places that are above ground. Right, above sea level. Okay, and then if I run this, it will, it, whoops, uh, if I run this, it will tell me what the, sh what the shape of those, that array is, once I've done the trimming. There we go, we have a 1335 rows by 1784 columns uh, in an array, and then it generates the plot. Um, so now, now it's in a NumPy array, and this is just I am show, the standard mat matplotlib array display tool. Here I choose a color map and add a color bar and, and labels. Uh, but here I haven't done a map projection at all. This is just um, in, um, in geographic uh, coordinates. Okay, so, so, by the way, when I try to yeah. run that from just the command line, yeah. I got a path error because the data directory is going up and then down. Yeah. Uh, the, the way my script is written, it's supposed to find this file and look at the data directory that's parallel to the, to the directory it's in. Um, and I, I, haven't ex I haven't tested that extensively, but I probably could have done it. Oh, it does? Yeah, it's not going back to directory. Oh, but I, sp I split it in the next line, right? But, but that's, it's not going to work it wrapped like that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Right, okay. Got it. Um, right, so, so to wrap the file here with OS path dot abs path, and I think I have done that in some other scripts. Um, but then... Uh, it, yeah, then it's not environment dependent on how it, uh, how it is looking for it. So I think, that, I think that'll fix it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay, let's see if it still works for me. Um, okay, and other people able to run that script? The Kawaii script runs for you and loads that, you loads that data? that, works. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you, if you manually set that data directory, it should work, but, um, but my magic for, for finding the... Uh, uh, the data directory doesn't work if you run it from, if it's finding a relative path, right? Oops, ah, there's a, <laughs> there's a painting error here. All right. All right, um, so that's, that's a basic example for running with raster data. Let's look at another one. Yo, oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, if you reverse them, I mean, it should have stacked them the other way around, right? Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's... Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, the order should matter here. So, yeah, I, I don't know why I wouldn't... Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, so, the one problem I had early on with the GDL Python findings was that I, I couldn't find a whole lot of... Python-specific documentation? Yes. Is that changing or has that changed? Um, there are a couple good tutorials out there. Um, so, so first of all, the, the GDAL um, API examples have Python examples, but they're not very detailed. Um, so that's, that's one place to start. Um, I actually just saw a, a reference to a, a cookbook. I'll see if I can... 
I'll see if I can find that link and, and show you, but I, I did find some cookbook examples that were really useful recently as well. I don't have them in this uh, it's presentation. It's a little bit annoying when it says, like, oh, well, here's the CA. You know, yeah, no, that, that's correct. So, so yeah, I mentioned, I mentioned here, for the most part, this is just a straight wrapping of, um, where did I mention it? Yeah, uh, it's a straight wrapping of the, of the C methods and, and you have to look up the C methods. And, and the bindings for Python don't have any help. There's no doc strings in them, right? right? So, so nobody ported the doc strings to Python so that you can get help uh, at the IPython prompt, right? <laughs> so there would be a good contribution if somebody wants to do, port all the doc strings to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so probably uh, the, there's a lot of documentation in the, in the C++ source that you could use to, to generate that. Um, and there are API docs and, and so on that you could, someone could do that, but it doesn't exist. Yeah. Just as I mentioned, you're going to show Fiona later. Fiona later. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So, so uh, uh, a raster Fiona would be nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I agree. That there really isn't, yeah. Um, okay, so, so one thing I'll mention before we go on here. Um, another way that the, the bindings for GDAL are not very Python-like uh, is that they don't raise exceptions. If you try to open a file that doesn't exist, it just returns none. It doesn't, it doesn't raise an exception. It just, it just returns a, um, a none for a value. So if you GDAL open some imaginary file, and, and other kinds of exceptions don't get raised as well. Uh, so errors that happen just don't have a return value. And a lot of functions have a zero return value. You have to check a return code, which is not very Pythonic either. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty thin wrapper on the C++ library in a lot of cases. Uh, but you can enable the exceptions. You just, you just say gdel.useexceptions, um, and from there on, it will raise exceptions for those, uh, those errors. Uh, and so I, in the example scripts, that's what I do, so that it's uh, more what we're accustomed to. We don't have to test that the that the file handle is none or not none. Okay, so now the exercise we're going to do is we're going to read a raster data file. Now this, this one data file isn't in the Git repo. This was over 100 megs and I didn't want to commit it to the, the Git repo, but I have a link to it uh, that was in the email that I sent uh, yesterday or the day before, and there's also a link in the data directory readme uh, and I can, yeah, that, that should be enough. Um, this is a geotiff, um, I believe it's called manhattan.tiff, manhattan.tiff. So if you have this, this file, it'll be manhattan.tiff. Uh, so. Okay, and that is, yeah, 120 um, megs of, of data. So you'll need that for this, for this exercise. And that's in the exercises directory. The exercise is called GeoTIFF. Okay. Um, and let's see, again, you might want to wrap this file in, in, in an absolute path. Uh, here, you need to download the file. Oh, I do have the, the full path for the, for the download here. So if you haven't done this already, download this file. Uh, everybody in this room will be pulling down 100 megs at once, so hopefully our bandwidth takes that. Um, uh, then you will open it um, and take a look at it. Read it into a NumPy array and... Um, you can uh, try setting the, uh, the map limits. And if you, uh, if you get done with that in your board, you can go on and, and get the data in the JSON file um, that uh, has city bike locations. We'll use those for another exercise uh, in a little bit. Uh, and there, there's actually an example that pulls, pull those, pulls those data if you want to look at the parsing for the JSON. Uh, but concentrate on reading the, the TIFF for now. Uh, make sure that you can read it. Um, 
Now, one thing that's different between this image file and the, the uh, digital elevation model that the Kauai file was is digital elevation is a single raster layer, right? But this is an image file. This is an orthophoto, and orthophotos have what are called bands. They're different raster layers in different colors. So there's a red, green, blue, and near-infrared layer in the, the raster layers, the bands of this GeoTIFF file. So you will have to pick out only the red, green, blue layers um, and change them to the right dimensions to be able to plot them. Um, the, it's the, the first, the row uh, of the NumPy array, the, the first dimension of the NumPy array is the band. So you have to do something to select the raster red, green, and blue bands out of that file. So that's, that'll be the NumPy manipulation part of this exercise. Okay, so, so go ahead and get that file and, and get started on this exercise, and I'll give you a little time to work on that.